Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin if you guys are new around here and this is the Simply Organized Home. And I just put out a call for questions yesterday on my Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, I believe. Just for some questions, plus I've received some questions in some YouTube comments that I just kind of wanted to, you know, put all together into one video so that I could kind of answer a lot of questions all at once so that I'm not typing the same answers over and over again. So I've kind of separated them and I've typed them out so that I know because they were kind of all on my phone, which I do use to film. And so I have home related questions and personal questions. So we'll start with home related first and then we'll get into the personal. So um, hopefully I will, I can kind of move through these pretty quickly. So this isn't like a super long video. So let's get started. The first question is advice on how to help kids keep track of their own things and tidy up. So I think if children are struggling to tidy and maintain a space, then they probably have too much. And just kind of eliminating a little bit at a time and putting those things into like a halfway home, maybe moving them to your garage or basement and giving them less to manage in their spaces is kind of the most important thing. My boys, I, I constantly am saying to them, if you can't manage this amount of mess, then it's too much for you to handle and we need to get rid of some things. And they're pretty quick to start cleaning up their stuff because they know mom means business and mom's gonna start taking things to the crutch. Um, but in all honesty, I think just limiting the amount of stuff that they do have to keep tidy can really make a big difference um, because when they have to keep track of things, uh, I think kids need to learn through responsibility. And I think that sometimes uh, losing things can be a hard lesson. And sometimes that's a financial burden on us as parents that, especially if it's something maybe like um, sports equipment that they need for an event of some sort or something that they have to have for school or whatever it is. But I do think that sometimes letting children learn those hard lessons of losing things that they chose to be irresponsible caring for can be one of the best ways that they can learn those lessons and become better at keeping track of their own stuff. So number two says, how do you create an organized toddler room with a messy toddler? Again, less. <laughs> um, I think especially with toddlers, don't give them access to everything. Just, I would just keep one basket of toys and especially when my boys were really little and they were toddlers and that's all they had access to. And maybe we had a few other things that we could kind of rotate in through into that basket. But if they have access to, you know, like a whole playroom of stuff, they are going to be messy. And to be honest with you, kids are overstimulated by the amount of toys that they have. So if they see all of these toys around them in one room full of toys, all they're going to do is dump. That's just how it is. It's they're overstimulated. And so giving them one basket of toys, they will play longer and have more interactive play with those toys. If they just have fewer than they would ever have if they have a whole room full of toys. So my suggestion is lift up as much as you can, put it up in your closets, declutter as much as you can that they're not using, keep open-ended toys, things that they can build with blocks, magnetic tiles, um, those bristle blocks are great when they're toddlers because they have those, you know, kind of like that sensory, those types of toys I think are wonderful for that like one and a half to three or four year old age and just get rid of everything else. <laughs> That's just my advice. Tips for having a tidy and clean fridge. I'm going to be really honest. My fridge is not always clean and tidy. Uh, I have really thought this, to be honest with you, for a long time. And I think that for me personally, the biggest tip that I have is to just clean your fridge out every week before you go to the grocery store or every other week, however often you go and only buy the things that you are eating. So if you're constantly cleaning your fridge out once a week, then you are kind of seeing the things that maybe are going bad before you're eating them. And it helps you kind of gauge how much you actually need to buy. So having less in your fridge does help, but that's not always a good answer if you have a larger family and, or maybe you go to the grocery store less often and you want to kind of just stock up maybe for two or three weeks at a time. 
but I think just don't feel like you need to go and buy all of the pretty bins. While, you know, maybe one or two of those might be helpful, I think sometimes we see pretty spaces on Pinterest and want to recreate them. And while they're beautiful, they are not realistic to maintain. And so I think that just keeping the amount that you have in your fridge a little bit lower and only what you're actually going to use and then doing just a quick five minute clean out of your fridge before you go to the grocery store really makes a difference. My next question is tips for keeping things tidy with babies and toddlers. I work part-time outside of the home and handle the finances from my hus for my husband's small business plus have two under two. Give me all the tips. Less stuff. <laughs> Seriously though. Um, I think just really getting rid of a lot of the excess clutter and limiting your kids toys. Like I said, one basket of toys is sufficient for kids to have. And if you want to do a toy rotation, maybe get, you know, three bins and put two of them in the top of the closet and keep one down and let them just have access to that one bin for, you know, three or four days or a week and then rotate them. I mean, I think sometimes we look at toy rotation systems and we're like, oh, that's going to take me weeks to get something like that set up. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. It can really just be like a basket with a bunch of toys put in there or, um, you know, maybe just one basket of blocks. It really can just be really simple. So I think having less toys available to your kids can help having less access to things that they can pull out. So like dresser your drawers, if your kids are prone to going in and just pulling out all of the clothes, sometimes kids get bored and you know, mom's doing dishes and all of a sudden she turns around and there's a toddler in their room completely emptying out everything. And I think just having less access to those things, if you can put them in a closet or you can put them kind of somewhere where they don't have as easily, you know, aren't easily accessed by kids is helpful. I also think just clearing off surfaces and not having as much visual clutter can make a really big difference. So, and I'm going to say this, but I think, I think this mom doesn't want to hear this. But I'm going to say it anyways, give yourself grace. Uh, you have two under two and you're managing finances for a small business. That's a lot. And you're not going to have a perfect home all the time. Um, my home is not perfect all the time. I think sometimes we think who we see on YouTube, uh, what the little, you know, 10 or 15 minute little video that we see once or twice a week is what their house looks like all the time. And that's not reality. Go check out my last video if you want to see what my kitchen looked like. Um, it might have been a couple of videos ago. But what my kitchen looked like on a Monday morning because that's real life. And real life is that while, yes, we can put systems and, you know, routines into place and we can have, you know, our beds made and our laundry done and our dishes done and all of these wonderful things, life happens. And those routines are not going to be 100% followed through all the time. And that's okay. I think just being able to keep things really simple though can make a really big difference. So just start decluttering. Just grab a box and look around your house and see what you don't really love. Maybe it's decor, maybe it's books, maybe it's furniture and it's just adding to your cluttered space and it's making you feel like your home is messy. Sometimes we feel like our home is messy so much because we have too much to care for, because we have too much visual clutter around us. And really, it's not necessarily messy. It's just that we have too much stuff. So that's my best tip. I hope that helps. All right, now I'm going to get into a few questions that I've had on YouTube comments in the past month or so. Um, so hopefully I can answer these quickly. What color is the paint in your living room, playroom, and master bedroom? So the living room, the playroom, the hallway, my boy's room, and the kitchen and dining room, kind of with the living room, are all repost gray that I had color matched to Bayer Paint. And it's Repost Gray by Sherwin-Williams. So love that color. It is like the perfect gray that's still like a little bit warm. It's not, it's not like cool and stark, but it's also super light and airy. Um, so that's Repost Gray. The color of my walls in here, you can see it's almost like a creamy gray color. This is called Classic Gray, also by Sherwin-Williams, also matched to 
Bayer Paint at Home Depot. Um, where's your couch from? Ikea. It is the Ektorp sectional. I also have the Ektorp chair. They no longer carry the Ektorp. I think that's how you say it, furniture, but they have one that's super similar now. So if you just go search on Ikea, you can find it. It's really affordable. It's held up really well. We've had it for five and a half years and it's held up really well. Where is your living room rug from? It is from Target. It is a Safa Vea rug. It's held up okay. We've had it since we've moved in almost five years ago. I will probably replace it in the near future. Maybe not near future. I don't like to spend money on rugs. Those things are really expensive, but it, it's going to need to be replaced. But it's that really thick pile carpet, which I like for some reasons and I dislike for others. It's super hard to vacuum. Things get lost in it like Legos. Um, but it's super soft and cushy to sit on if you guys are kind of like we'll play games around our ottoman and stuff like that. So that's nice. But I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I do like it. It doesn't show stains. So yeah, it's good. Okay, where did you get the cabinet under your TV with the barn doors? We built this cabinet. My husband builds furniture on the side. He's really good at it. And he built that. He also built the this thing right here, the barn door kind of cabinet in our master bedroom that has bookcases and then it has cabinets down here. He built that as well. So uh, where is your bedding from in your master bedroom? It is from Pottery Barn. It is the pick stitch quilt set. I don't think it's a set actually. It does come with like the Euro shams. I bought those separately. Um, have had it for four plus years and it's held up really well. I will leave a link down below. Next question. I love your decor because it feels so simple, but still cozy. I constantly feel like I'm buying more and it just looks overly cluttered. What tips do you have to make a space feel beautiful and cozy, but not cluttered? So I think that the most important thing is to eliminate as much visual clutter as you can. Uh, add back in things that bring you joy and make you happy and that you love and also kind of go with really soft, cozy textures, pillows, blankets. I'm a big proponent of having, you know, less stuff on your surfaces, stick with odd numbers. I also like more focal pieces rather than lots of little kind of tchotchkes. I'd much rather have like a big vase of flowers or kind of greenery somewhere than having like, you know, five or six little things scattered across a table. I feel like that's more of a statement and it also leaves more of the space open, which I've said before, gives your eyes room to rest, which when we're looking in a room, we need room to rest our eyes or we are overwhelmed by the amount of stuff and it does feel cluttered. So I would say those are my best tips. Um, favorite places to shop for decor. All time favorite place is Target, the hearth and hand line. I love the hearth and hand line. I love a lot of things in the hearth and hand line and I would spend a lot of money if I had a bigger house, but I don't, and I'm glad I don't. But um, I also like Hobby Lobby. I'm kind of picky about what I get at Hobby Lobby because I think it can kind of just be like what everybody else has. Um, I get more of my seasonal decor there because it's cheaper like Kirkland's, uh, TJ Maxx some and home, home goods some. But again, I don't, I don't shop a lot for home decor. I feel like I kind of have found my style and I just kind of stick with the things that I already have and I rotate things in and out. I have a tub in my garage where I just keep things that I'm not currently using and I can go and pull from that to get different florals or vases or just kind of little decorative items that um, I want to add and that way it makes my house feel fresh and clean and new without having to spend a lot of money. Okay, best organization tips for kids sharing a bedroom. Um, give each kid their own space, even if that just means like they get a, a drawer um, or a basket where they can just keep their special items in. My boys each have a basket in their closet. They can keep whatever they want in it as long as it fits in the basket. I think letting them have some personal space helps. Um, realizing that your kids don't need as many clothes as you think they do. I think sometimes we feel like our kids need to have, you know, I don't know, dozens of outfits and they don't. And while it's fun, especially if you have little girls, 
to shop and buy all of these new pretty things. They don't need it. They're probably not going to wear it very often. And as long as you maintain your laundry on at least a semi-regular basis, they're not going to run out of clothes. So really just keeping minimal wardrobes and then limiting toys. Like we've kind of sat in our boys' room. They have their Legos in their room. They have, um, my son has his baseball cards. So he has in his, in the closet, they have a couple shelves for their baseball cards. Really, it's more my older son. And then they have one basket of army men. The rest of the toys aren't in their bedroom. We have what's called a playroom, but it's more of like a book room um, where we do keep a few other toys, things that are more open-ended magnets, like the magnetic tiles and um, like a marble run and Gravitrax and things that my kids enjoy. They're they're kind of more educational games or at least open-ended games where they can be a little more creative, but those stay in the playroom. So just limiting the amount of toys and stuffed animals, especially. So I have an open concept home too, and it always feels messy. What tips do you have for keeping things tidy and organized? Um, I think open concept homes kind of have that like you know, we all have that love-hate relationship. I feel like it's really nice when we have people over. And even just like when our family's together, like my husband can be playing with the kids in the living room while I'm cooking, cooking dinner in the kitchen and we're still all together. We can talk and interact. Uh, and there's not really a wall between us where I'm stuck in a room by myself. Um, but it also means that as soon as you walk into my door, you see my kitchen, you see my sink, you see my dishes, you see all of it, all of the mess that could be, you know, have been created. So I think number one is just keeping less, you know, visual clutter on your surfaces. So kind of reset your home to what is tidy for you and then look around and see if you feel like there's too much on your surfaces, whether it's your countertops or your um, maybe like a sideboard or any kind of shelves like bookcases. Does it feel already like it's too much or like you're at max capacity? Because if our home is at max capacity as far as like visual clutter, before we even start to live life, then we're going to automatically feel stress and anxiety when life happens and dishes start to stack up on the side of the sink and, you know, kids bring toys in and books and all of the different things. So rather than feeling like we can't live life, just limit the amount of visual clutter that's just kind of naturally already there. And then also just kind of have regular pickup time. So if you're home during the day and you have maybe have little kids, then, you know, set a pickup time like right after lunch before they go down for a nap and then right before dinner and then right before bedtime. And that way there's just, con there's constantly, you know, you're putting things away back where they belong and the mess doesn't become this huge explosion. It's just smaller, more manageable messes that you can clean up quicker. So, all right, we are on to a few of the more personal questions. So question number one is top three homeschooling tips for someone just starting out. So if you don't know, our family is a homeschooling family and we have been for almost right about two years now. Um, so again, I'm still kind of a newbie. I'm still figuring things out. I'm still learning right along with you. Um, I would say my first tip is don't feel like you're a slave to the curriculum. You're homeschooling and homeschooling is supposed to give you freedom. So don't feel like you have to finish a curriculum either. I think that's one of the most popular things I hear is people are like, oh gosh, I have this much more of my curriculum to go and I have this much time and there's no way I'm gonna have to cram it all in. And if you know anything about public school, if you didn't know, I was a public school teacher before I stayed home. Most of the time, public schools do not finish the curriculum either. So most classrooms will get through about 80%, maybe 90% of the curriculum because curriculums are set up to have, you know, the first 20% or 25% is review. The middle 50 to 60% is new content that they're learning in that grade level. And then the last, you know, 20, 25% is topics that they're going to relearn or review in the next grade level. So if you don't get to that last 20% of the curriculum, it's not the end of the world. So that's my biggest tip is just kind of 
allow yourself the freedom to say, all right, we're done. We're going to, uh, you know, see, say that we finished what we needed to finish and be happy with that. My second tip would be to just kind of not feel like you need to buy all of the things. I think I was kind of, I didn't know what curriculum I wanted to try and I felt like I needed to just kind of get my hands on a bunch of things and I bought things that we ended up not using the first year. And so the more I get into it, the more I'm realizing like what works for our family. And so that's helpful, but just to kind of stick to the basics the first year, I think sometimes we feel like we need to get all of the things and just having just the basics. And then you can always add things in. You can always add in history. You can always add in science. I promise that your kids are not going to be behind if you don't start science until, you know, January, like they'll be okay. So, and if you don't do science until they're in fifth grade, they'll be okay or sixth grade or whatever, they will be okay. And my last tip is to don't feel like you have to do school all day. I think that sometimes when we see like, oh, well, you know, the public school starts at 8 a.m. and then they end at 3 p.m. So we need to be schooling for six or seven hours a day. And that's just not the case when you only are schooling, you know, your own children, whether you have one or, you know, six or seven or whatever. You're going to get done quicker. You're not going to have as much to do. You can do a lot of family style subjects. And I've read a book. It's called, I think it's called The Four Hour School Day by Dorinda Wilson. I will leave a link for it below. And it really kind of opens your eyes to the idea of getting school done in four hours and then allowing your children time to play and engage with others, engage with, you know, their peers, engage with their siblings in the afternoon and having that time to really just explore and learn at their own level and they're on their own path and based on their own interests. So getting school done in four hours is always our goal. My next question is, do you keep your purse and wallet minimal? Um, I do my best. So my purse, I try to keep a small purse because of that very reason. I am, I tend to be kind of a stuffer with my purse. So if I were to have a big purse, I, it would be full. It would, I mean, and I, I've had that in the past where I'm carrying around, it feels like bricks on my shoulder. And so I can't do that. I just do a smaller purse and I try to just keep my wallet and, um, a lotion, sunglasses, keys, chapstick, just the basics. At the end of the week, I try my best to clean it out because, you know, receipts and granola bar wrappers and Hot Wheels cars and all of the things somehow end up in my purse. If you're a mom, I'm sure that you understand me. Uh, so I do try to just once a week go through, clean things out and reset it. I think that that helps. I think sometimes we look at people and we're like, oh, they constantly have a perfect organized purse and maybe if they don't have kids they do but I live real life with my children and my purse is not always perfectly clean so if you see me open it it might have some receipts spilling out and that's just real life so I do my best I keep the amount of space that I can you know fill up small and that makes a big difference all right last few questions how old are you I am 33 how long have you been married 12 years so 12 years in December and I turned 33 in December. Um, what faith are you? We are Christians. We are probably lean towards like a reformed Baptist theology as far as our beliefs. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, we believe the Bible. So, and then what's your best tip for maintaining a minimal wardrobe? This is my last question. I am not wonderful at keeping like the most you know, most minimal wardrobe. I think that a lot of people do it way better than me. I think that there are some people, you know, like the 333, Project 333, where they wear 33 items for th three months. I think that's right. Anyways, um, I think just shopping less. <laughs> so the less you go into a store, the less you're going to buy, the less you're going to have to bring home and then maintain. And then for me, my biggest tip when it comes to keeping a minimal wardrobe is to just limit your hangers. So I keep all of my hangers on a specific, all of my clothes on a specific type of hanger. Uh, it's kind of like a, a felt, you know, covered hanger. And I, I like those a lot, but I only have so many of them. And once they're full, then I know I've got enough or too much and it's time for me to declutter before I bring anything else in. So just kind of limiting my hangers. 
And then also being diligent to go through my clothes at the end of each season to see if there's things that have not reached for. And if there's things that have not reached for, then I'm really diligent to just say, okay, it's time to let that go because I'm not going to wear that again. And that mindset of, well, I didn't wear it this year, but maybe I'll wear it next year. More often than not, like 99% of the time, you're not going to wear it next year. If you didn't love it enough this season, you're not going to wear it you know, next year during this season. So just letting go of those things that you aren't wearing at the end of the season and just taking the time to, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, just scan through your closet and pull out the things I think makes a difference. And just again, limiting your hangers. So, so anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, this Q and A. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and I will try to do this again in the future. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you guys next time. Bye guys. I've been waiting all my life for something I've been down the darkest roads and up in the clouds But I've always felt